Hi everyone, welcome, thanks for joining me. In this video, I'll be discussing discourse analysis, which involves the study of language beyond the sentence. In this video, I'll discuss three concepts, conversation analysis, discourse analysis, and critical discourse analysis. Let's get started. Much of linguistics focuses on what's going on inside the sentence by analyzing sounds, sound sequences, words, phrases, or even sentences themselves. But discourse analysis in its various forms extends beyond the sentence boundary to examine extended stretches of naturally occurring language. One of the earliest approaches to studying language beyond the sentence is called conversation analysis. Conversation analysis emerged in the 1960s and 70s through the work of Garfinkel, Sachs, Shegloff, and Jefferson with the goal of understanding how speakers make conversation work or how conversations are structured. Conversations are typically structured according to conventions of turn-taking, and this means that one speaker speaks at a time or holds the floor before they uh, give up their turn to another speaker in the conversation or cede the floor. Now, whilst the, while the speaker is talking, the listener may employ back-channeling techniques, and this is just in the form of like, yeah, uh-huh, or maybe a nod of the head. These are strategies that are used by the listener to indicate some sort of engagement with the story being told by the speaker. I mean, we were just sitting by the campfire uh -huh. and just minding our own business, you know, enjoying nature, and then all of a sudden the suburban rolls up out of nowhere and they park like 20 feet away from our campsite. Yeah. Then a couple get out, a man and a woman, and then they just walk up the road for, I don't know, a few hundred yards, I guess, presumably to like scout the trail ahead or something like that. But like, why, why did they park right next to our campsite? The road was fine for a while. They could have just driven up a few hundred yards, stopped, and then got out and walked. So they're not being creepy, right? Or if you do want to park next to our campsite, then get out and talk to us. It's not that weird. Ask us. We'll tell you what the conditions are like ahead. Or if we don't know, we'll say, sorry, we don't know. But then you're not being weird, you know? How creepy. I mean, what would you do in that situation? Yeah, I'd be angry. What a couple of weirdos. Establishing turns is determined through verbal and nonverbal cues, such as volume, pitch, eye contact, and gesture. Also, uh, something that occurs in conversations is uh, referred to as adjacency pairs. Adjacency pairs are utterances that frequently co-occur with one another, especially at the beginning and end of a conversation. Hey, Bob. How are you? Oh, pretty good, John. How about you? Conversations also include pauses and interruptions. So uh, yesterday at the gym, I uh, set a new personal record. Oh yeah, what's that? Well, I bench pressed 400 pounds for the first time and today I was so sore that I just couldn't. Bro, you can't bench press 400 pounds. Yeah, I can. And by the way, do you know a good veterinarian? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I guess, let me get my... Because these pythons are sick. Again, note that the emphasis of conversation analysis is not on how speakers co-construct meaning, but rather how speakers work together to make a conversation happen, or how is a conversation structured at all. In fact, Gail Jefferson devised a really elaborate uh, transcription system that can be used to track a lot of details that go on in a conversation, such as changes in pitch, length of pauses, and overlapping speech. Whereas conversation analysis seeks to understand how speakers talk or how conversations are structured, discourse analysis seeks to understand how speakers construct meaning or notions of identity. For example, in 2008, Deborah Tannen conducted a study on how women talk about their sisters and found that when women do so, they tend to use three types of narrative. Small N narratives, big N narratives, and master narratives. Small N narratives involve, for example, just a simple story that is told by a woman that involves their sister in one way or another. A big N narrative refers to the themes that would emerge from those small and narratives, and master narratives refer to the broader cultural uh, ideologies that uh, help to shape the big N narratives, uh, such as, for example, the general societal expectation that uh, sisters should remain close to one another. 
Now, this research falls in line with discourse analysis because it is using the conversation or the stories that are told by these women to understand how they construct notions of uh, identity. And this is about meaning, right? So this is something that conversation analysis was not designed for, and it would be ill-equipped to address the narrative themes that emerged in Tannen's study. Another approach to studying how speakers use language to co-construct meaning is critical discourse analysis. Discourse analysis and critical discourse analysis are very similar except that the latter employs the critical perspective. So what is the critical perspective? Well, it's uh, really embodied by three principles. First is the notion that all problems in society are institutionalized, or for example, things like uh, poverty, education, and race, they are all inextricably linked with one another rather than representing three different issues. The second principle of the critical perspective is that it seeks to challenge unjust discourse um, in the field of linguistics, communication, or whatever discipline it might be. And the third principle of the critical perspective is that it seeks to bring about social change. So, uh, critical discourse analysis it seeks to understand how language is used to construct meaning, but through the lens of asymmetrical power relationships. So, for example, if I wanted to perform a study on how American instructors teach writing by adhering to a model of standard American English at the expense of their students' dialects of their nurture, then it might be most appropriate for me to conduct that research using a critical discourse analysis approach. Notable practitioners of critical discourse analysis include uh, Norman Fairclough, Pierre Bourdieu, and Michel Foucault. Okay, uh, that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video useful. In the meantime, uh, stay safe, be well, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Take care.